Hey YouTube, Christopher Zamias here. We're back with another video. First and foremost, happy Easter. Uh, today's video, uh, as I'm sure everyone has been paying attention to, is focused on oil. Who controls the price of oil and why oil prices matter to the USA? So, without further ado, let's go ahead and let's just get right into it. Number one, let's start with the largest producers of oil. The number one producer in the world is the good old USA. 17.87 million barrels per day. And this number does include natural gas. Followed by Saudi Arabia at 12.42 million. Russia at 11.4 million. Canada at 5.27 million. And China rounding out the top five at about 4.82 million barrels per day. Daily worldwide consumption is about 100 million barrels per day. Now looking at the largest consumers of oil, you have the USA at 20 million barrels per day. You have the European Union at 15 million barrels per day, followed by China consuming about 13.5 million barrels per day. India at 4.9 million barrels per day. And you have Japan at about 3.9 million barrels per day, uh, rounding out the top five. Now, of course, that's 100 million barrels per day of consumption in a normal economy. Some of you might be wondering, how much does it cost for the top producers to produce a barrel of oil? Well, here's the answer. $20.99 per barrel for the US8 non-shell. Saudi Arabia, $8.98, which is amazing. Russia, $19.21 per barrel, which again is incredible. Canada is in at 26.64, and then you have China rounding out the top five, reportedly between $9 to $23 per barrel. Again, I put them at number five because that's where they are. Nobody quite knows what they actually produce it for because numbers out of China are wishy-washy at best. Now, here are the largest net exporters of oil. Saudi Arabia, to no one's surprise, followed by Russia, Iraq, Canada, the United Arab Emirates, Kuwait, Iran, and the USA is at number eight. Some of you might be asking yourselves, why is the US a net exporter of oil, but not in the top five? Well, it's because we are also a top consumer of oil, whereas Saudi Arabia, Russia, Iraq, really aren't consuming nearly as much oil as we are. So here are the net importers of oil, as I kind of alluded to. The United States is, is in at number one at about 8 million barrels, barrels per day, followed by China, India, Japan, South Korea, Germany, Italy, um, and you see Netherlands rounding out the top five, of course. So who controls the price of oil? Well, it's, real, it's a combination of two, but generally it's OPEC and Russia. Russia is not part of OPEC, but they do collude together to artificially hold the price high. And then of course it's supply and demand. We have a ton of supply. We have virtually zero demand across the EU, across the US, which are the two largest consumers of oil. And thus you have a glut of oil. And by the way, it was just announced here that OPEC and the allies have finally agreed to record oil production cuts after days of discussion. We've all been following the news. We were aware that it was coming. Uh, Oil production cuts of 9.7 million barrels per day, which will begin in May, and they will then taper back uh, starting July 1 through the end of 2020 to 8 million barrels per day, and then effective in January 2021 through about this time next year, it will taper down to 6 million barrels per day, and then we're likely to be in the same situation that we are today where Everyone wants to get back to producing the max amount of oil they can because, of course, it means more jobs for those individual countries and organizations like OPEC and more profitability. Because, again, as you saw in earlier numbers, they can produce oil far cheaper than we can. Uh, so it behooves them to keep production up because no one can com quite compete with their pricing. So you might be asking yourself, why are oil, oil prices falling and will they continue to do so potentially in the short term? Well, the answer is yes. So the issue really here is no consumer demand. That's why oil prices are going to continue to fall. 
while the production cuts are nice, the issue is, is that we've gone from a worldwide daily consumption of 100 million barrels per day down to virtually half. Looking at this article here, you see gasoline prices are in a free fall because there's no one out there driving around outside of the big trucks delivering consumer staple goods and the essential goods. No airlines, no what have you, are taking off. Further, gas prices drop to more than a four-year low, which really lends credence to the fact that I think we have more pain to go. And a lot of experts who follow this stuff regularly believe we have more pain to go because quite candidly, we don't have a clear picture on how bad demand has been hit. So the issue for the United States and why it matters as far as price stability to the United States is because of jobs. As you see, there's about 6.7 million Americans that comprise of the energy workforce out of the 147 million employed. Um, and by the way, these are high paying jobs that grow on an annualized basis, especially in the Permian Basin. Now this is continued here on the slide. You see the job growth, which I kind of alluded to. If some of you are asking yourselves who controls the Permian Basin, well really it's a combination of two large corporations, Chevron and ExxonMobil. Uh, those two really have a lock on the Permian Basin and that is really where our cheap oil, our long-term oil is going to come from. That's really what gives us the energy independence. So in the event, and they just cut a deal of course, but in the event they couldn't have cut a deal, here's what it would have meant. It would have meant in simple terms that lower crude prices, and here are the positives. Lower crude prices mean more money in consumers' pockets under a normal economic condition. Lower crude prices mean you pay less for flights, you pay less for travel, you pay less for uh, overall goods that you buy because it's cheaper to transport those goods as compared to normal circumstances. So those are the positives and they are positive for the consumers, they're positive for corporations who are delivering goods and rely on oil prices, airlines, Amazon, UPS, FedEx, etc., airplanes, delivery trucks, those type of things consumer uh, driving, traveling, those things all get cheaper because naturally the prices for the companies that are providing those goods, like the airlines, uh, etc., have cheaper fuel costs. Cheaper fuel costs typically translate down to the consumer. They trickle down, so to speak. Here are the bigger issues, though, the negatives. Lower crude prices means that there is less short-term desire for the big U.S. oil companies and shell companies to search for new oil, oil wells, and extract it because it won't be lucrative enough for them to do so, which means no more job growth. No job growth equals layoffs, as the profitability of finding new oil and extracting it won't be worth it, which directly, of course, impacts families, income, and overall economic spending. This leads, again, to clarify on the layoffs, lower consumer, consumer spending from well-paying jobs because those jobs will have been eliminated. Lower consumer spending means US GDP will be affected because unemployment rises while putting more strain on the United States government and the banks that subsidize and finance the debt of these fringe oil companies. Uh, and that could lead to bankruptcies, which inevitably will lead to uh, corporate restructurings and banks potentially being in a systemic issue where they're holding all of this debt, and it's worthless. So, in summary, um, we see now through the video who controls the price of oil. We also understand now why oil prices matter to the USA. It's simple enough to look at it from a consumer, consumer good, travel, services perspective, where cheaper, or cheaper oil prices are certainly better for the consumer. However, it behooves all of us in this economy to have a stabilized oil price, which really, it behooves OPEC and it behooves Russia as well. They can produce oil so cheap. Of course, when it's at 35 to 45 a barrel, they're making a ton of money. Um, and, oh yeah, the United States will continue to hammer out the Permian Basin. They'll continue to hammer out other means of extracting oil from difficult places and not so difficult places, which indirectly and directly means a lot of jobs and a lot of job growth. Because oil independency means that the U.S. doesn't have to rely on outside countries to not only determine the price of oil, but also 
we won't be at their will when it comes to uh, acquiring the oil, right? So that's the video for today. Again, I wanted to go over this because you see a lot of this in CNBC. You see a lot of this um, on the news, specifically relating to everyone making a big deal of oil. Um, and in this short video, I wanted to give everyone kind of a little bit of insight as to why it is so important, who controls the price of oil, um, and frankly, to the US GDP, job growth, etc., how it all circles together. So that's the video for today. Please, if you like what you've seen, don't forget to like and subscribe. And if you have any comments, questions, or concerns, please leave them in the comment section below. Again, have a happy Easter, and I'll be back to you guys soon with another video.